I am hosting the third Blackthorn Prod Game Jam, which is starting this Saturday. I'm Noah, and if you have no clue what a game jam is, it's an event that challenges developers to make a game. For this game jam, you'll have one week, and I'll reveal the theme which you'll need to base your game around when it starts. The best games made during the jam will also be featured in a video on this channel, so you can head over to the jam page and join the event if you want. And so I thought this would be a great time to share some of my favourite tips to having a successful game jam experience. Tip 1. Join or create a team. This gives you the opportunity to make new friends, learn a great deal from the experience of others, have good laughs, share successes and failures, and get a bunch of help. You can meet game developers on the Blankton Prod Discord server, for example. Tip 2. Solo is great too. Just a different experience. You'll have more creative freedom and get all the credit if your game turns out awesome. However, if you do go solo, make an effort to interact with the community during breaks, give feedback on people's screenshots or GIFs, share your work in progress, plans and hopes. A big part of the Game Jam Joy is the community around it. Game developers from all over the world learning from and inspiring each other. So don't block out the world, even if it does save you some time, join the community and don't hesitate giving or asking for help, ideas and feedback. Tip 3. Make a devlog after the game jam is over. This can be a short video, blog or Twitter post for example. It's just about sharing your game creation experience. So this can inspire others, but also helps you reflect on what you did right and wrong and what you might like to do differently next time. Tip 4. Relax and have fun. It doesn't matter if you don't finish on time or create a complete buggy mess. Learning the game dev craft is a slow, steady climb. Taking part in a game jam is just a tiny part of the journey, so don't burn yourself out working around the clock. Tip 5. Work normal hours. Game jams vary in length. The upcoming Blackthorn Prod game jam is a whole week long, so I firmly believe that small but productive chunks of work are far better than long days of non-stop game making. Even two focused hours a day can be enough. Less can be more. Don't wait until you're burned out before taking breaks. Tip 6. Try new things. Game jams are not about creating masterpieces, but having fun with a community and learning. So do something you've never done before, like 3D modeling, making shaders, or if you've never made a puzzle game, going wild with that. Tip 7. Submit your game to the jam even if it's incomplete and or buggy. Partly because it may be better than you think it is, and we're often our own harshest critic but mostly to learn to be okay with failure. The negative but hopefully structured feedback may or may not shed light on your experiment's shortcomings, but you'll develop a thicker skin and be less sensitive to receiving thumbs down in the future. Tip 8. Be honest but kind when giving feedback. If you dislike the art, don't say so without giving advice on how you think it can be improved, and perhaps try hard to find at least one thing you like. Also offer words of encouragement. I know most people can handle honest, blunt feedback, but still being a little more eloquent can create a nicer atmosphere and there'll be less tension around failure. Tip 9. Come up with simple ideas. This is a classic, but don't be too ambitious with your game concepts. Ideally, you come up with something that is quickly made playable and that can be scaled and expanded on if you have time left. Tip 10. Prototype with simple squares and circles. See if the core gameplay is interesting, and only then worry about visuals and polish. If you are working in a team, perhaps have each team member during the first few hours of the jam create a little prototype solo. Then everyone can go on a meeting, test each other's prototype, and decide which feels best to polish and expand on. Tip 11. Nothing quite beats action. Talking for hours and hours during the idea phase can be a little risky, you may come up with lots of ideas, and they might sound great on paper, but until put into action, in other words programmed and tested, you can never be certain if the idea is too ambitious or just extremely boring. So I recommend 2 hours grand max of talking, and then you begin prototyping and see what comes up. Tip 12. Have someone who isn't on the team, such as a family member, playtest your game. They might spot easy to fix bugs, and give you valuable feedback. Fresh eyes can work wonders. Tip 13. Make the game easy to play for you, the developer. This way players who have never explored your world before have a chance to complete the game. 75% of game jam games are painfully difficult, many of the ones I've created included. 
even too easy for a game jam game is better than too hard in my opinion. It's really satisfying finishing a little experience. So tone down the difficulty. Tip 14. Extremely short is fine, even if the game lasts a minute. If that one minute is filled with interesting characters and interactions, it will be a minute well spent. It's a hundred times better than long and boring. Tip 15. Set yourself a deadline a few hours before the jam is officially over. This way there's more chance you actually finish on time. During the two last Blackthorn Prod game jams, I received dozens of developers asking to submit their games late. I tried helping, but I can't make promises, especially because it isn't exactly fair for those who finished before the deadline and had less time to work. Tip 16. Give lots of feedback and ratings once the jam is over. This is a great way to interact with the community, offer help and advice, and hopefully learn and get inspired by what others made. Tip 17. Winning isn't the most important. Yes, being first in a category boosts the ego and feels nice, but the dopamine rush is temporary, and what really remains is the experience and journey, what you learned and how you'll apply it in the future. Tip 18. Create a new project. Open up all your softwares, prepare yourself a cup of tea or coffee, take out your notepad before the jam even starts. This way you're ready when the theme is announced. Tip 19. Meditate. For example, if you've been spending hours prototyping and trying to come up with ideas and nothing seems to work, your mind will be very busy, and a busy mind, in my experience, is less likely to be creative. So spend time outdoors or meditating, being in the presence and not thinking of anything related to the game jam. Your unconscious will do the work and when you return to the computer, you'll be refreshed and new ideas will pop into existence as if by magic. Tip 20. Don't give up. Although it can be discouraging starting the jam badly, spending time on prototypes that don't work, and seeing the clock tick by, it's never too late. Many of my best game jam creations were made with half the allotted time. Heck, even three hours can be enough. Tip 21. If you really dislike making sound effects, code or art from scratch, or have no clue how to compose music, and aren't interested in learning, then by all means download an asset pack or find something online. This saves you time, keeps you focused on what interests you, and makes for a more enjoyable game jam experience. Just be fair and clearly state in the game's credits that you did not make such things from scratch during the jam. Fellow participants will rate you poorly in such categories, but only out of fairness for those who did make whatever you didn't from A to Z. Tip 22. Spend at least one hour on polish. This means sound effects, particles, little animations, anything to make player interactions feel more alive and satisfying. Often these are quick and easy to implement and can go a long way to improve the player experience. Tip 23. Set yourself game jam goals. Why are you taking part in this event? Is it simply to have fun with friends? Finally finish what you start, learn a new skill, or perhaps improve your polishing, or quite the contrary, spend less time on that and more on level design. Write down a list of 1 to 5 goals you're aiming for. This can give you some clarity and be exciting and motivating. Tip 24. If you're low on motivation or inspiration, try watching some game jam behind the scene videos or devlogs. This can light that inner spark. I have dozens, but there's plenty other great channels. Simply type Game Jam behind the scenes and get ready to be fueled with game dev passion. Tip 25. Make game jamming a fun hobby. Making games fast and messy is a skill you can develop like any other. Take part in a jam maybe once a month and perhaps fall into the habit of making a tiny game in one hour every day. This might sound ridiculous, but you can actually come up with interesting prototypes in extremely short periods of time. Tip 26. Make your game easy to play, preferably directly in a web browser, or at least on Windows and Mac, so people can jump right in without needing to download strange external softwares or own a rare Linux machine. Tip 27. Try and avoid a block of text to explain your game. I know time is limited and making a smooth interactive tutorial isn't easy, but huge walls of text can put off many players. And for those who make the effort to read through it, 
it is likely to be confusing or quickly forgotten. So I recommend making the game simple and intuitive to begin with and introduce new rules slowly but surely. Tip 28. Accept the fact that sometimes motivation will be low. Don't wait until you're bursting with energy before getting to work, because chances are high you'll wait for ages. Instead, really trust the fact that motivation comes with momentum. So get started no matter your current state of mind, and be patient with passion, which is there just waiting to be found. And finally, tip 29, stay focused. Entering the flow state where you're completely present with whatever you're doing can be key to doing great work. So resist listening to lots of lyrical music, impulsively checking your phone, and browsing the internet. This takes you further away from real enjoyment. I recommend you take healthy breaks and do whatever you like during those, but while you're creating your game, no matter how tempting the distractions, be patient, stay on track, and you'll be well rewarded in the long run. I hope you found at least one tip interesting or useful. Remember, the Game Jam starts this Saturday, so join now and get ready for a wild, instructive experience. If you're a beginner, this is a great opportunity to break out from your comfort zone and really gain some game dev confidence. Also join the Discord, this is a great place to connect with the community. If you don't know anything about game creation, then I recommend you check out our beginner course to game development and programming on Udemy. You can even follow along during the jam and change the project a little to fit the theme. We also have three other courses for slightly more advanced game creators, links in the description. Alright, good luck with the game jam, I can't wait to see what you all create.